So what we're saying is that the initial test would be in essentially low temperature situations where uh, the efficiency is the only thing you really care about. You don't care too much about efficiency for home heating purposes. But if you want to get into electric power generation, efficiency and the ability to generate electricity with high temperature differentials is important. I think electricity will be generated in homes, in small compact units. And the, it may be the case that the whole electric utility grid will eventually disappear. This is a possibility. That, that, that's very fascinating, the whole concept that the, 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 the city as we now visualize it becoming a village because of everything being self-sustained. Indeed. Your own power. Exactly. Homes will be much more self-sufficient, as they almost in effect are already, but energy is the last holdup. We still have these electric power lines coming into our homes, and it would be great, wouldn't it, if we could sever that link. I, I'm still remembering the great New York City blackout. Yes. Never again could you have one of those. But you know, with all the silliness that we have about this subject and the, the, the mirth that's been made about it, it's so incredible to think that in our lifetime, of all the other wonders we've seen, that we now see the ult what almost appears to be the ultimate water, ultimate miracle, energy from water. Well, that, that, that brings me to the whole question of, you know, whose ox is being gored by all of this? Why the great resistance of uh, the physics, the, uh, uh, an, an academia of the physicists? Mm -hmm. uh, and why is it uh, such a, po a political hot potato? Well, it's a political hot potato for several reasons. First of all, it was in direct conflict with hot fusion. The hot fusion people thought they knew all the answers to how nuclear reactions could occur with hydrogen isotopes. And it turned out that they didn't. And it threatens their $500 million a year program. That's number one. Number two, that also threatens the whole academic framework of we high energy nuclear physicists understand all the secrets of matter. Yes, give us $8 billion more and we'll build a 53 mile ring in the Texas prairie and we'll understand that extra little piece that we need for the final theory. But don't bother us with data that's here that claims that nuclear reactions are occurring at low energy. They said they they knew everything about the possible nuclear reactions that could occur at low energy. But the problem is they just didn't know this. And they're confronted with a threat to their entire intellectual foundation. And they put themselves way out on a limb on this. They just didn't say, oh, I don't believe it. They attacked it with the most vituperative language, and they're going to pay for this. This is the thing that I find rather amazing. There have been previous times in history where scientists have disagreed. Scientists disagree all the time. Yes. Uh, they've, they've even disagreed and gotten personal about it. Right. But no one has said, don't do the experiment. Right. Now well, they're saying that. Th it seems to me that um, this has a ramification in terms of patent rights. In the United States, unfortunately, no American has been granted a patent for coal fusion. This is not the case in Japan, not the case in Germany, and the Patent Office continues to provide poor uh, victims with news clippings, would you believe, from 1989 that say, ah, Department of Energy proclaims coal fusion doesn't exist, all the early experiments suggest that it doesn't exist, therefore you don't get a patent. And, and people try to interject intelligent uh, counter-arguments saying, well, but look, look at all the evidence that's built up since then, and that, that goes, uh, goes for naught. Let, let me ask another question, because, you know, yes. I, I keep thinking of this, and I say, in the beginning, there was the problem. That is, the questioning of the integrity of the experiment yes. is the questioning of the integrity of the school itself. Yes, yes, yes. And um, the... What, what caused that? I mean, it, it, you know, many things have been said about how it was announced. It was announced at a press conference, even though a paper had been accepted by a journal and so forth. Lawyers became involved and said, 
to Pons and Fleischmann and to the University of Utah, you cannot tell them that it's going to take a certain amount of time to get the reaction going. You cannot tell what journal it's going to be published in. There was all sorts of problems in the way it was announced. But that being said, OK, and people can read about that in my book, Fire from Ice, uh, it does not give anyone the right, it seems to me, to continue years after, year after, years afterwards, where, where literally hundreds of experiments of a positive nature have been done, to continue to ridicule this business. Well, I suppose the interesting response is that the Japanese uh, were so upset by the, the performance of Pons and Fleischmann that they're now financing him in his experiments in, in, in Switzerland, I believe. Well, uh, actually, it's France, France. Uh, close. Uh, they are being financed by an affiliate of the Toyota Motor Corporation in the south of France. Uh, they have all the funding they need. There are many Japanese companies involved in this. They're getting patent protection, and we are not getting any. And this is a catastrophe for the United States. What does it mean to us if the Japanese, the French, the Germans do this before we do? Well, I think it's all over for us in the United States. I really think this is a disaster in the making. No one in Washington seems to want to wake up. Congressman Sweat woke up. He made some very nice statements recently to try to get things moving. But do we have anyone else in Washington? No, we have people hiding from this. Even at the highest levels, they hide from this. We talked about the fact that uh, th there was a controversy as far as academia was concerned. Mm -hmm. How come it now becomes a, a political controversy? Because, you know, Politicians don't care anything about science. They generally care about. Well, they fund. Elected. They fund science. They fund space stations, and they fund super colliders, and they make decisions about things like that. But they are afraid of things like coal fusion, which has been given the taint, unfortunately, in the United States, of some sort of sick science that is some sort of voodoo uh, science that is not science, that is non-science. It is out of the realm of the established, acceptable science. And if you engage in this science, you are pathological. Well, I would like to thank you very much for coming by this evening. Thank you for having me. And it's been very informative. And I know our viewers will be very anxious to see fire and ice. And uh, are you uh, currently writing another book? I am trying to write another book that will go beyond Fire from Ice and uh, we'll talk about the infinite energy, in fact that will be, will be the title, the infinite energy that will be available to the world starting this decade. Thank you very much for watching us. I hope you found the program informative. This is Dave Tyson, your host on Creativity at Work and good night.